Today is Friday, September 1st, and this is Around the Bases with our MLB insider, John Heyman. John, how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you, Ryan? I'm doing well. We're going to start off with our top story, Pete Alonzo, the everlasting saga about what's going to happen with Pete Alonzo and the Mets. Are they going to sign him? Are they going to extend him? Rumors of him being traded. So, John, when you're getting your arms around this entire situation with the Mets and Pete Alonzo, how do you see this playing out right now? Well, I do think they're going to make him another offer. Uh, they'd already made him one offer. Obviously, it didn't fly. He's had another good year now since last winter when they talked contract. I think at that time, uh, Pete wanted to wait a little while. I get it. I mean, look at what the free agents did, especially ones with power like Aaron Judge. Uh, got a big deal, $360 million. Could have gotten even more than that from the Padres or the Giants. So I get it from Pete's perspective. I'm curious to, to see what the Mets are going to do here, because if they trade Pete Alonzo, I think that's the first big sign that 2024 is really not mm. a year where they're expecting to win the World Series or hoping to win the World Series. We shall see. I mean, obviously, when they talked to Max Scherzer, he was convinced that uh, the Mets weren't going to be a big time contender in uh, 2024, accepted the deal to Texas where he wanted to go anyway. Um, you know, at this point, we're not sure. The Mets say they do expect to be competitive. I take them at their word. I think they will be competitive. But to be a World Series contender, hard to see them trading Pete Alonso. I mean, they've been trying to get that number five hitter to bat behind him and protect him now for a little while. Haven't been able to do it. I thought Beatty might be that guy. He's now coming up again. We'll see how he does this time. But he was not that guy. Not easy to find power hitters and um uh, you know, if they end up trading Pete Alonzo, uh, that will be a sign that uh, really they're shooting for 2025, I do believe. I mean, we've seen reports and from good reporters, legitimate reports that uh, they expect Alonzo to be traded. We shall see about that. I do think they will give it another try. And, uh, you know, I do believe after talking to Pete this week that he does want to stay in New right. York. He does like New York. Does that mean he's going to stay for, you know, a, a deep discount? Uh, we shall see. I, I doubt that. I don't think anybody does when they're a right. star player a year from free agency, and I don't blame him. Yeah, you don't blame him in that situation, obviously. Right. Like you said, you know, take that Aaron Judge way of testing the free agent market, seeing what he can get on that free agent market. But thinking about the Mets and their situation, John, Pete Alonso is 29, going to be 30, obviously, when he hits free agency. So – but my thing is, is how are you going to replicate that type of production in your lineup? You're talking about a 40 to 50 home run guy that you can right. be trading away. You just don't normally trade away guys like that. And it doesn't feel like that power is going to disappear for Pete. Obviously, he doesn't have the high contact contact like a Freddie Fre Freeman. But right. he kind of reminds me like he's a Matt Olson. He, he's going to give you 40 to 50 home runs a year. And he's going to be that right. power hitter in your lineup. So that's my question, John, about this entire situation is if the Mets do decide to trade him, how are you going to replicate that type of production in your lineup? Not going to be easy. Like I said, they haven't been able to get that number five hitter. The power does play. The power does bring big contracts. I will say this, though. You know, I, I talked to some people who said they think if, he, if the Mets put a two in front of it, 200 million. Should get it done. Last week, I recommended five for 175, which to me, that's more than Freeman. That's more than Paul Goldschmidt. And let, let's be fair about it. At least my opinion is Goldschmidt and Freeman are better all around players. Right. You know, they've won MVPs. Um, Gold you know, too. Yeah. I mean, Alonzo is a terrific player. I mean, not to diminish him in any way. We wouldn't be talking about $200 million if he wasn't a terrific player, you know, but. Uh, you know, he, he isn't a perfect player. He's not Aaron Judge. I don't think he's as, quite as good as Freeman or Goldschmidt, but he is a legitimate power hitter who's an outstanding player. And one last time, I will say this, he is very good in the clubhouse. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't even know why this came up, but I think somebody with a microphone said something and assuredly somebody who's never been in the clubhouse, just someone who likes to talk and really just throwing it out there. To me, you got to be in that clubhouse. If you're going to throw out something that negative, got to be in that clubhouse. But you know what? You know, newspapers are a different game than, than radio and TV sometimes. So that's the way it works. But great in the clubhouse, fast healer, plays every day, yeah. huge power. So that's why people think it could be 200 million and that, you know, maybe if they get there, 
that will get it done. But uh, as I said, first base has not been as lucrative as shortstop, right. outfield, other right. positions. So don't take it as an insult because I saw some fans tweet about, oh, 200 million should be 300. Look at first base and look at the history of it and power hitters. I mean, there was a time where Prince Fielder was getting huge money and some yeah. other big time first base. Mark Teixeira. Players. Right. We're getting huge money. Uh, those days have gone. Now with analytics, people have decided that uh, it's not worth $300 million anymore, but 200 should be good. And uh, hopefully the Mets uh, put it in front of them and get this done. Yeah. And I, you touched on a great point there about Alonzo. He seems like a great guy. And the fact that he seems yeah. genuine, he wants to be in New York. He wants to play in New York and he's, and he's been through some of the down times of the Mets and some of the be better times of the Mets. So, I just think it would be smart, obviously, if the Mets could hold on to him and keep him here long term. And it'd be great for the organization, obviously, uh, as a homegrown Met. John, let's go to our next topic here. The Yankees and Mets are deciding to call up their youngsters. We're getting into September here, the final month of the season. Obviously, both teams are not going to make the playoffs, so they're pivoting in their decision on how they're going to play out the rest of the season and when the roster is expanded today. So now we get the news of their top prospects, Jason Dominguez and Austin Wells for the Yankees getting called up. And Ronnie Mauricio and Brett Beatty getting called up for the Mets. John, what do you make of these moves for both the Mets and Yankees deciding to call up the youngsters and see what they got in this final month? Yeah, it's interesting. It gives people something to really cheer about in New York, which is great. Uh, I, it's kind of the, the guys are divergent. The two guys we really have their eye on are Mauricio and Dominguez. And look, Dominguez started in double A this year, just recently got called up to triple A. There's been no clamoring to bring him up. Mauricio, the clamoring to bring him up has gone almost the entire season. And he has had a very good year at triple A. For whatever reason, the Mets didn't think he was ready. There was a period where he was going in through a little bit of a slump. That is not the case now. So timing is good. Dominguez also very hot. Saw them both in spring training. Both have big power. Both hit long home runs in spring training. Looked very impressive. Tough to judge on spring training, right? I mean, you know, you're facing half the pitchers you're facing or more are going to be in the minor leagues. Right. And they're not big league pitchers. So just because you put up big numbers in spring training doesn't mean you're going to be great against major league pitching. Um, that said, they're both big time prospects. I think Dominguez, huge power. Um, Question about both these guys with the position, though. I know Dominguez has been listed as a center fielder. Um, he looked okay in center field to me, but, you know, he isn't certainly built like a center fielder. Uh, look, nothing wrong if he's a left fielder. The Yankees have been looking for a left fielder for a long time, so that wouldn't be so bad. But, hey, maybe he'll fool us and be a good center fielder. Uh, Mauricio has been moved around a lot. He started as a shortstop. Obviously, the Mets have a shortstop for – nearly a decade more in Francisco Lindor, really good player. So he's not going to be a shortstop, but probably will start at second base. That's going to be the primary position. So McNeil, who's very versatile, will play more outfield. Looks like going forward as we take a look at Mauricio and see what he can do. Second, short, and third, said to be his best positions. He did play a little bit in the outfield, but uh, should start at second base today, and uh, it's going to be uh, – I'm glad they called up these two guys because it's going to be an interesting time in New York. Austin Wells and Brett Beatty also coming up. We've seen Beatty obviously disappointed earlier, still considered a good power hitter with potential. We'll see if he's a third baseman. That's a question at this point. And Austin Wells, a good catching prospect for the Yankees, which, I mean, the Yankees at this point have – you know, Higashioko's done okay, but – He's generally been a backup in his career. Yeah. So it would be nice if Austin Wells shows something here. Obviously, Trevino will be back next year with the team. And he was an all-star last year, that, not this year. But uh, so the Yankees could be in decent shape at catcher if Austin Wells proves to be pretty good. Yeah, some guys obviously look forward to see what they got in this final month, get a little taste of MLB pitching, see how they can hold up there, and then that maybe will help direct them in the offseason of how they want to shape this roster going into 2024. But let's go to our next topic here, John. The National League MVP race is heating up. Ronald Acuna Jr., it was sick watching that Grand Slam, the reactions from everyone. There's a great camera angle of Freddie Freeman uh, seeing the home run get hit and his reaction. Uh, Mookie Betts hits a couple home runs. He's in it. Freddie Freeman's in it. John, how are you seeing this race going right now for the National League MVP? Yeah, one of the best uh, MVP races we've ever seen. Obviously, the American League race was decided long ago, and that's Shohei Otani. We know that. National League, it's been Acuna 
all the way up until recently, and I think it can properly be described as a coin flip now between Acuna and Betts. I see it as Betts being slightly in front due to the fact that he has a higher OPS, he has a higher war, and not by a little. He's a, he's about a point higher on war, which is fairly significant. So, um, and he has played multiple positions, not just multiple positions. He's an outfielder, a great right fielder who's gone over and played shortstop, which we never see. So yeah. that position versatility, um, it certainly has helped his war, but beyond that, he's been slightly better offensive player than even Acuna leads the national league in hits and on base. Um, you know, and if someone wants to tell me it's Acuna, I get it. I mean, he certainly was better for the first half when really both teams decided the races in their respective divisions. So there is a narrative that could tell you Acuna is better. I mean, those all those runs in the first inning, he is an enormous part of that. And he has been absolutely brilliant. I mean, right now, to me, it's probably a coin flip, but forced to give an opinion. I think Mookie Betts is the MVP. Funny to say that uh, Freddie Freeman and Matt Olson having an incredible year yeah. didn't get mentioned by me. They're running three and four. Bellinger's been pretty darn good, too. He's probably five. But uh, right now, one, two, and it's a shame one of them has to lose. Maybe they'll have a tie. Remember that year? This is before your time, Ryan. But This is before my time. Yeah, Keith Hernandez and uh, Willie Stargell uh, tied, and that's just a fluke. It's not like we can decide, okay, guys are even. They're going to they're gonna be a tie. That's fair. It's based on the vote, and the vote happened to come in and tie. Maybe that can happen again, but for now, if I have a vote and I don't have this vote, Mookie <laughs> Betts is the guy. Well, I think what's interesting, John, is, is I wonder if a lot of people who do have that vote are going to be enamored with the fact that Ronald Acuna now is the first ever to have 30 home runs and 60 right. steals in a season, sure. you know? Like, that's something I feel like could be really, like, that number. Got it. He's the MVP. It's got to be them. And not to mention the Braves are the best team in baseball. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, both teams are fantastic. Both teams have blown away the field in their divisions. Um, you know, I, I think, to me, the tiebreaker is that Betts is a little bit better statistically if you look at the overall statistics. But, I mean, Acuna's been incredible. 30-60, never been done. He's now done it. He's still got a month to go. Uh, it's he could be 30-70. It's unreal. He could be 30-70. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let, or let's 40, this, 70. Who knows? I'm 40, not putting 70. anything past them. Oh, <laughs> crazy. 40, 80. Uh, 40, 80. Yeah. Um, all right, John, let's bring this all home. Your disappointing team of the week. Who is it? Well, I'm going to go with the Angels again. I think the Angels and the Padres have trumped the Mets and the Yankees for disappointing team of the week. And maybe that's because I picked them in the World Series. Don't look <laughs> at my predictions back in the post special section. They were horrific. Uh, of course, I've now told you how bad they are. Uh, the Angels this week uh, put six major league players on waivers, irrevocable waivers, and five of them were claimed. They saved $5 million by doing this, and we'll see what the luxury threshold works out, but I think they got below one of the thresholds, and maybe we'll save a few dollars in tax as well. And I don't know whether it's going to help them sign Otani, I don't think $5 million savings is going to do it as we think he's going to get a hundred times that 500 yeah. million or close to it. Um, you, you don't see this from teams. You really don't. I mean, I I'm surprised we don't see more of these waiver uh, team guys being put on waivers because look, I mean, you know, the Yankees aren't going anywhere. They're saving something with Harrison Bader. It's one player. They're calling up, obviously, we know here, the Martian, Jason Dominguez. Yeah. We get with the Mets with Carrasco. He hasn't done it. He's got a pretty high salary. Someone had claimed him. They would have saved a few bucks. I understand that. But to put six guys on waivers, and we knew, we knew Giolito was going to be claimed and Lopez and more. I mean, there was basically a fait accompli that they were gunners. Uh, the Angels gave up good prospects, particularly to yeah. get Giolito and make a run at it, but obviously they they behaved in a way be, because they wanted to keep Otani. So they were in a different boat than everybody else. Right. Well, they didn't probably think they were going to get in the playoffs. They wanted to make a run for it, impress Otani, try to keep him. So they gave up a few prospects to try to do this, and you know, obviously it backfired. But you know, it, it's also weird for baseball that the the Guardians got three guys, the Reds yeah. got two. 
because their records are a little bit worse than other teams that they're competing with. And now they've got an advantage and really is not a fair advantage. Now the Guardians are five games behind. So if they come up and win, all right, give it to them. But to get three players like this for nothing, a little bit unfair. Don't blame the Guardians at all. Do blame the Angels. They are my disappointing team of the week, not for wins and losses, but for putting six guys on waivers, losing five of them, and mailing in the season. Now, I don't. I personally, I wouldn't think that would impress Otani. You know, maybe they have word now they they don't have a chance. I don't know, but not worth it for five million dollars. Not when you're a billionaire. You touched on two really important subjects there, John, about Otani. The decision, obviously, not to trade him at the trade deadline to go for it and bring in guys like a Giolito and a Grichik. And then it didn't work out. Obviously, you had the Trout injury, Otani injury, and they just weren't winning ball games. So then you pivoted. And the other part that you touched on was the fact that now you could place players on irrevocable waivers because we removed that post trade deadline, like the actual second trade deadline, right? And that was removed in the new collective bargaining agreement. So now you see these situations of these teams just dumping players and teams that maybe aren't in the playoff picture or in the playoff picture towards the bottom can claim guys first because they have a worse record and they're getting them for free without trading for any, without any valuable prospects in return. It's a very interesting situation there, you know? Yeah, it could possibly lead to a rule change, particularly if the Guardians come up and beat the Twins and win the division, steal a division because they have three new pitchers. Um you know, I don't, again, I don't blame the Guardians. Um, I, I'm a little surprised that the Angels would do this to save $5 million. That's not going to help them sign Otani one way or the other. And, uh, you know, if I'm the Twins today, I'm thinking this is a little bit unfair. The Reds yeah. obviously picked up Renfro and Bader, two outfielders. That's not going to be as big an impact, particularly the way both of them are hitting at this moment. They're not exactly hot. So I I don't think that's really going to affect the National League race, but it, it could have, you know, it could have. Nobody took Grichik like Carrasco because he's in a big slump. And, you know, one thing that surprised me a little bit, not much, because Clevenger's obviously had some off-field problems, but he's pitching a lot better than Giolito right now. Nobody took him. Now he makes a little bit more money, maybe the off-field thing, but it's only a month. Uh, you would think somebody would pick up a viable pitcher, but, I guess that off off field thing really played there, but uh, good for the Guardians. Don't blame them; they are much better today. They suffered a lot of injuries, particularly to that rotation, and yeah. you know, in a way, it's justice for them. But in another way, it's not really justice for the Twins <laughs> and some of these other teams that are competing and just have a slightly better record and aren't able to get these players. And I'm sure they were interested as well. I, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if almost everybody claimed Giolito. Why, why not, right? right? I mean, he doesn't make that huge amount of money. He's obviously a very good pitcher, even if he hasn't been at his best with the Angels. Why not, right? Uh, no, unless, you, not. unless you've got four great pitchers you absolutely love and you've already got the playoff set. Anybody, I, mean, I wouldn't be shocked if the Dodgers, look, they've had injuries in the pitching rotation, the Braves, but I mean, he was never getting to those teams anyway. Yeah, you're 100% right, John. And I appreciate you as always for going around the base with us and covering all the top stories, man. Appreciate you. All right, Ryan. Good talking to you. See you later.